Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I talk about counter drone technology, the war in Ukraine and how drones are being used there, and remote ID here in the U.S. They're all linked together. Let's get to it. As hobbyist drones grow in popularity in the U.S., <clears throat> there is a new evolving set of technology uh, programs coming out called CUAS, or Counter UAS Technology. Counter UAS Technology are a series of um, capabilities to find, identify, and mitigate, which means less secure, less serious, unauthorized airspace activity. Okay, uh, Counter UAS uses a variety of components, tools, techniques to find aircraft in the airspace, uh, both compliant aircraft, primarily through the remote ID uh, signals, and non-compliant, other tools will then further identify these aircraft to see which ones uh, should belong in the airspace or not, and those that should be kept out. There are permissions in place for entities or authorities that may mitigate or disable unauthorized aircraft, which means basically shoot down the um, unauthorized unmanned aircraft. So why does the U.S. need this capability? Uh, one of the overarching themes you'll see with um, drones is security. Drones can do a lot of things. They can fly a lot of places. As I'll discuss in Ukraine, they are being used in uh, ways that can cause harm to infrastructure and things in, uh, just in the country. In the U.S., we're not worried about an invasion, uh, at least at this point. There is, however, a lot of civil infrastructure and um, capabilities that need to be protected from drones that might be trying to do it harm. This critical infrastructure could be prisons, it could be airports, it could be energy installations, think nuclear power plants, or national security events. And so the counter UAS industry, this an emerging industry, is having a... Um, wants to demonstrate that they can do something about drones that are not compliant, that are not being flown within their regulations to protect this infra, infra, infraspace structure and provide security for uh, just US, um, U.S. citizens. So let's take a moment to take a look or an overview of the drone situation in <clears throat> the war in Ukraine between, between Ukraine and Russia. This is being filmed in October of 2023. It has been said for the U.S. military, it's just kind of a, a phrase or a watch phrase, that there has not been an enemy air attack on a U.S. military person since 1945. <clears throat> That's by and large true. Uh, 1945, of course, was the end of World War II. Uh, U.S. troops were under constant air attack from either German or Japanese forces. After World War II, what the Air Force tried to do was establish what they called air superiority, air superiority that means that the U.S. Air Force would keep enemy fighters and aircraft on their side of the line, and by and large, the um, air forces of the enemy could not bomb U.S. troops. That was pretty much true during the Korean War, 1951 to 1953. There were some isolated observation aircraft, Bed Check Charlie, that could um, harass troops. For sure, it was corrected in Vietnam. The North Vietnamese, North Vietnamese Air Force was defending North Vietnam. It was not attacking the South. And of course, for operation on Desert Storm and our operations in, in Iraq and Afghanistan afterwards, there really was no air force in many cases like in Afghanistan or Iraq that harassed U.S. troops. That is not true today. It is not airplanes that are harassing the troops, rather it's drones. U.S. troops in Iraq have had several drone attacks on their position. And as we can see in uh, the, the war in Ukraine, it's being often called the first drone war. Drones are so important to either side. Ukraine and Russia are a good uh, observation point for this. They're both technically capable adversaries because you need a lot of technology to keep drones working to support a war effort. On Ukraine's side, the drones are so important, they literally have a Ministry of Digital Affairs at the top level of the government to oversee efforts to understand technology and do what needs to be done, in this case, for drones. Even individual battalions will have a digital officer there to take care of the necessary modifications for the software of drones and other programs um, that are going on. Drones are so important for the Ukrainian effort, it's estimated that Ukraine goes through about 10 
10,000 drones a month. I repeat, 10,000 drones a month in attacks, kamikaze missions, and so forth. That's approximately 330 drones a day are lost in the Ukraine war. They're that important. Huge efforts are made sourcing the drones, getting them, and of course they've got to do work on them because many of the drones they get have remote ID built in. It takes a concerted effort of software engineers, hardware engineers, powerful antennas to remove that capability. There's always changes in the drones so they get software updates. It's just an ongoing 24-7 struggle to keep everything running for the drones in Ukraine. But without that, it, either side is going to lose their advantage. So the drones, in addition to dropping munitions, they also provide a reconnaissance capability. So instead of the front lines being just a couple miles wide at the front, it can, it can extend much further back, depending on what the drones are seeing. Now, all this is understood, and then when you get back to the United States, they're concerned with these capabilities of the drones for reconnaissance to do unauthorized operations. What can we do to prevent harm from coming from this? And the answer is, Nobody knows for sure. There is the unquestioned need for counter UAS technology, but nobody's quite sure what works. It's probably going to be a range of systems depending on what is needed at the time. For the, um, it could be somebody with a gun shooting down a drone. It could be some sort of radio frequency jammer to jam signals that the drone is needing to fly. It could be nets. It could be drones that are configured to attack other drones, air-to-air -air killer drones, for example. But all this is being worked. And of course, for a military solution where you want to shoot down and kill a drone first thing, you can't necessarily do that in a civilian construct. So what happens? Returning to the U.S., the first thing you might ask yourself, well, is there a problem? Are drones flying where they should not be? And the answer is yes. If you go to the FAA's website, the easiest way to get to it is to simply Google FAA UAS Sightings Report. On the very large FAA website, they have a section where they collect all the sightings by pilots of drones flying in controlled airspace where they should not be. We know they should not be there because the controllers are not aware that the drones are there. These are reports by airline pilots, helicopter pilots, says the 172 pilots. It's a range of, of, of folks. And the sightings reports are done in quarters every three months. Um, I've downloaded here the uh, quarter from April 1st to June 30th, 2023. And just taking a look at the first week of April of 2023, there were 30 sightings of unauthorized drones in controlled airspace. That's over 1,500 sightings per year of drones being where they should not be. And this is information is publicly available. It's being collected by the uh, folks um, advocating counter UAS systems. They're actually making charts to go ahead and sell the products showing why we need some way to basically shoot down drones where they should not be. Now, how you go about doing that is a huge and complicated issue. And that is where the FAA comes in to discuss. And of course, somebody thought it would be a good idea to mount a handgun and fire it from a drone in flight. The FAA actually has an office called the UAS Security Office, just trying to figure out how to provide security for civil infrastructure from drones. And so they are just beginning their work on what they need to do on that. Now, to do something like this, you need congressional direction and you need money. Uh, the FAA has both of that. That's in the 2018 FAA Authorization Act. That's where remote ID became real. Uh, Congress said to go ahead and do it, and they provided funding for it. This has resulted in the final rule for remote ID. And by the way, as a reminder, the remote ID uh, ruling will come into full effect on March 16th, 2024. Up to now, nobody has to apply. The FAA encourages you to apply. But after March 16th, 2024, any new drone you buy will have remote ID. Install standard remote ID. If you don't have that on your RC airplane weighing 250 uh, grams or more, uh, you'll have to supply a remote ID module. The only exception to aircraft with remote ID are folks recreational aircraft flying in an FAA-recognized identification area or FRIA. So 
So remote ID is a centerpiece of the overall goal of the commercial drone industry to fly completely integrated manned and unmanned operations in the national airspace system without having to go through extended um, exceptions from beyond visual line of sight, uh, flying uh, in control zones, and so forth. So remote ID is all part of this. Remote ID will change and evolve over time, but remote ID is also a part of the UAS security office on how they're going to um, handle the counter UAS technologies. So some things that have happened in that 2018 FAA reauthorization bill is the FAA was directed to see if they could protect um, airports from drones, what technologies worked, what didn't work, what's the best way to approach this. And so they understand that the technologies from a war zone, they're going to adapt them to civil airspace, and then they'll present that to Congress and other stakeholders to see what they want to do. The FAA also, for the counter UAS um, project, is uh, beginning an aviation rulemaking committee, which is a pretty big deal when you want to start making some new rule focused on counter UAS solutions. Uh, the goal of the rulemaking committee is to develop rulemaking that will enable the expanded use of detection mitigation technology while ensuring the safety of compliant aircraft of all sizes. So this Aviation Rule Committee has 58 members uh, from aviation, public safety, the counter um, uh, drone people and society. There's 25 federal agencies, 14 allied global agencies participate as observers. And it's necessary to protect the airspace, but also the belief is the protection of the airspace from un unauthorized users is going to allow a much um, healthier and better growth of fully integrated manned and unmanned aircraft operations. So that's just an introduction of things that are happening. Again, the whole counter of uh, drones, in other words, how to shoot them down, there's no single answer. There's a bunch of different answers. People are working on it and countries are working on it. Uh, Israel is a, is a leader on this. So it's going to be happening. How it's going to be happening, how it will be integrated with us still remains to be determined. So thank you for tuning in on this video. That's just an overview of some things that might be happening with drones. Takeaways, remote ID will start on March 16th, 2024. Remote ID is here to stay, and we'll have to see how things develop from there.